Hi there, my name is Josh and thanks for joining me today. Today I want to talk about computer buses. So a bus is something that you pay for a ticket, you get on and it takes you somewhere else. Well, sorry, one of the buses is. That's not the bus we're going to go over today. We're going to go over the specific communication protocols that exist between two or more different components. And this could be within your system or outside of your system. This could also apply to software as well, but we're going to look at the hardware implementations of this. A bus is, put simply, the connection between two devices. And it usually takes place of a copper wire holding a plus and a negative, and then data is put through that signal. But a bus allows a lot of things to happen within a computer system. Now there are three different types of buses I'm going to go over today. They are the system bus, really fast, expansion bus, used for expanding the computer system's capabilities, and then there's peripheral bus, for sending data out and accepting data from the outside. But before we get into that, let's talk about the history of a bus. You see, back in the 1970s, computer components were not as small. In fact, they were huge. And a cabinet might be dedicated solely to processing, and then, then another cabinet might be dedicated to hard drive, and then another one would be dedicated to short-term memory, and maybe some other I.O. operations. The idea is that these were three separate huge components and they needed to be connected in an efficient manner. And they were connected with what was called a bus bar. It was a series of parallel wires all running and everything's all attached together. And it ran on a bar and it was the back plane of these components that connected everything. This allowed the CPU to fetch something from memory, process it, and save it to the hard drive. So back then the bus bar connected three separate cabinets of components and nowadays a bus is much smaller. It connects components within a single board and sometimes with even within a single chip. Which is like, whoa, that's cool. <laughs> so let's talk about system buses. These are the system buses that connect the CPU to your RAM, your CPU to your platform controller hub, also known as a chip chipset. And then the system buses also connect components within the computer. And that could be the CPU to the memory controller. It could be the CPU to the um, interrupt request. Um, some very things we don't really mess with. But a system bus would be the things that are connecting within a system to make it work. The bus within your system is going to be primarily responsible for about three different things. And it's all related to the CPU. So the CPU has to be fed code, it has to find address of memory, and it has to, you know, send out requests for memory, and then it has to accept data. So the control of addition, minus, subtraction, division, multiplication, etc., all the different math stuff your CPU does, the data it, up, it manipulates with that code, and then where to put the data or where to fetch the data from. Those are three different things that are very core to any CPU, and that is one of the main purposes of a system bus. So, one example of a system bus is called the front side bus. This is the connection between your CPU and the chipset, and for Intel this might be called the quick path interconnect or ultra quick path interconnect. They've had several different names throughout the years. For AMD it has been historically hypertransport, but nowadays we are starting to see AMD Infinity Fabric, and then we are also connecting our AMD chips to the chipset with something called PCI Express, which we'll get into with our expansion buses. These are just some examples within your system. They can tell you a lot about your system, about how data moves within your system and where it goes, how it's moved, how fast it's moved, how much is moved, and really great topics to look into but for now all you need to know is that these are system buses very specific to the motherboard or the chipset or the CPU that you're working with. Generally the components involved do not change i.e. the chipset does not change or the processor doesn't change or the bus within the processor doesn't change. It's the idea that these are baked onto the board they're gonna allow stuff to move where it needs to go and um, in the case of, you know, your memory controller, all these paths are burned into the PCB and they connect the processor to the RAM. 
The next thing I want to go over is an expansion bus. The expansion bus is anything that is going to expand the capabilities of your motherboard or your computer system. And that could be adding a hard drive. Maybe you're adding a hard drive over the SATA bus. Maybe you're adding a graphics card and you put it in the PCI Express bus. Or maybe you're adding a solid state drive and you're adding it to the M.2 bus. These are all buses within your system that are designed to expand the capabilities of what it can do. Now these have historically been used to add uh, sound cards, network cards, and graphics cards. These were things that didn't necessarily ship with every computer back in the 1980s or 90s, but these expansion buses allowed that to just be popped in and it works. And we still have them today for adding high-speed network cards, for adding graphics cards, sometimes even two or more graphics cards, and then we also have them around for adding wireless capabilities. There is a note I want to make here on the expansion bus, and it's that storage has always been given its own bus. It started back when we had the 40-pin IDE cables. They were really slow. They operated in parallel, which, by the way, is sending multiple bits at a time. And then we moved to the SATA, which is serial ATA, which is sending one bit at a time, but sending it a lot faster. Serial is what we use in a lot of our systems now as a communication method. It's a lot easier to send one bit at a time than to send possibly 19 bits at a time. That way everything, you know that everything gets there in order, you can increase the transmission speed as you go. So as far as storage, we've gone from the 40 pin IDE, we've gone to SATA, now we're on to M.2. It is a really fast port and it allows for PCI Express lane speeds, which leads us to our next expansion bus. PCI Express. It's been around forever. It is the successor of the PCI bus and is the successor of the ISA bus. So those are the two major expansion buses within your system. Probably more than you want to know. Anyways, let's go on to peripheral buses. So the last type of bus within your computer is called the peripheral buses. This will include our well-known, known and favorite, the USB. This is the universal serial bus. This is a standard form of communication that we tend to use for literally everything nowadays. There's USB mouse, there's USB keyboard, there's USB webcams, there's USB um, flash drives, there's USB microphones, there's USB, and it goes on. USB is a great example of a peripheral bus. Other examples of a peripheral bus are any displays that you connect. This can include HDMI, VGA, DisplayPort. All of these are ways in which video is outputted from your system. Another peripheral bus is Gigabit Ethernet. Maybe you're sending out audio. And maybe you're just old school and use a serial port or a parallel port to connect your old printer. I wanted to make this video to explain just what a bus is. And maybe in some later videos we'll go over and really tear apart some specifications such as USB or PCI Express, or you know, AMD's Infinity Fabric is a really hot one right now. Um, maybe in future videos we can go over that and try to understand those more. But in order to better understand any of them, you have to understand what a bus is and what kind of bus it is within the system. Is it a part of the core system, high-speed communication system bus? Is it a part of the expansion bus designed to expand the capabilities of the system? Or is it a peripheral bus for accepting or receiving data outside of the system? I hope this has taught you about buses. Thank you for your time. Please like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye.